Good morning, guys. Today we are going to solve one numerical. For this cantilever beam is varying from flexural rigidity from A to C, from C to B by using conjugate beam method. We are going to analyze this beam by using conjugate beam method. And it's a numerical. It's carrying a point load at the free end of quantity W. And the length of this beam A to B it is L. By using conjugate beam, we are going to analyze this beam. It's a statically determinant beam. We have to find slope and deflection at the free support by using conjugate beam method. Conjugate beam is an imaginary method to find the slope we have to draw an imaginary beam. To find the deflection we have to draw one imaginary beam or otherwise this imaginary beam is also called as conjugate beam. This is the actual beam and this is deflected shape of the scantilever beam. This is the deflected shape. Deflection is maximum at the free support. And this is the deflection at C. And draw tangent on this elastic curl at C. This is called slope at C. And draw tangent on the elastic curl at C. It's going to touch along the axis of the beam. This is called slope at C. And this is slope at B. And next, this is the deflected shape of a beam. For a cantilever beam, the shape of the deflection of a beam, it is circular arc shape. And this deflected curve is also called as an elastic curve. The shape of the bending moment diagram is a triangle. And this is the shape of the deflected curve of a beam, it is circular arc. That is the difference between the shape of the bending moment diagram and the shape of the deflected curve of a beam. And now we are going to draw one conjugate beam. The conjugate beam, the fixed support is free and the free support is fixed. It's an imaginary beam. B is free, so it is imaginary beam, it's fixed. And the support, actual beam at A is fixed and it is free at the imaginary beam. This is called conjugate beam. And now we have to calculate bending moment at A, at B, at C. The bending moment at free support it is zero, and bending moment at middle point it is minus W. Distance from C to B it is L by two, and the bending moment at A it is minus W into L. And now draw bending moment diagram of actual beam. This is B, it's C, and it's A. Bending moment at B is zero. Bending moment at C it is W, L by two minus WL by 2, so it is below the axis. If it is positive, above the axis. The bending moment diagram is negative, that's why it is below, below the axis. And next, the bending moment at A it is WL. This is the bending moment diagram of actual beam. This is the given beam. This is the deflected shape of a cantilever beam. It's a conjugate beam. This is the bending moment diagram and now we have to draw M by A diagram. This is the bending moment diagram by A diagram. Just a second. And now we are going to draw bending moment by A diagram. M by A diagram. See guys, look at here. C to B, the variation of the flexion is one time. And the flexural rigidity of C to B, C to A, it is two times. So there is a variation in the bending moment in the M by A diagram. As we are going to discuss now. B, C, A. At bending moment at B, it is 0. Bending moment at C, it is W, L by 2, E, I. And the flexural rigidity is varying from C to A of 1 by 2, E, I. Varying from 0.5 times. 50% there is a variation. So bending moment it is WL by 2 by EI into 1 by 2. And the bending moment at A it is WL by WL by EI. So guys this is ma this is a C1, ma this is a C2. This is the M by EI diagram, bending moment by flexural rigidity diagram. And this is the bending moment diagram of actual beam. It's an imaginary beam or a conjugate beam. It's a deflected shape of a beam. And this is actual beam. And now we have to find slope at the free support 
it is B. Theta B stand for slope at B of actual B. This is shear force at B of a conjugate beam. The shear force, the shear force of the conjugate beam at freeze at fixed support, it is the slope of the actual beam. The slope of the actual beam at B is the shear force acting at B of imaginary beam or a conjugate beam. And now we have to calculate total load, total load acting on conjugate beam. It is P. P is the total load acting on imaginary beam. It is the area of M by E A diagram. So this is M by E A diagram. Divide this M by E A diagram into number of rectangles and number of triangles. Mark this C2, C2 and the C1. And mark this is. Divide this into first triangle and split into second rectangle and this is the third triangle. This M by E A diagram divided into first triangle second rectangle and shape of the third figure it is triangle. This is 3 by 4 by EI by L and this is WL by 4 EI. And coming to this area of first triangle, area of second figure rectangle, area of the third triangle. And first we are going to calculate area of this first triangle it's off, it's a minus because the area of the bending moment diagram is minus multiply with WL by 2 EI multiply with L by 2. This distance from C to B, it is L by 2. Area of triangle is off into base into height. And next, area of second, second figure, the shape of the second figure is a rectangle, width into height, it is L by 2 into WL by 4 EI. And next, area of third figure, the shape of the third figure is a triangle of, it's a base is L by 2 into 3 by 4 into WL by EI. Add this 3, this is the total load acting on imaginary beam, it is WL square by 2 EI. It's a minus. Because the area of the bending moment diagram by E diagram is a minus. So the total load acting on the conjugate beam is P equal to minus W L square by 2 EI. And this is total load acting on imaginary beam. It's a P. And after this, and now we have to find the slope at the actual beam at B. It is shear force at B of conjugate beam. It is minus P. Minus P. The P is minus P because the force acting vertically down in the so it is minus and the quantity of P is minus W L square by 2 EI. So the slope at B it is minus plus W L square by 2 EI. This is the slope at free end. Minus minus it become minus multiply with minus it became positive. And this is the slope at B and it's convert it is expressed in terms of radians. And next coming to slope at A. Due to this slope at A, due to this fixity, the beam is going to deflect at some part, draw elastic, draw tangent on this elastic area at A is parallel to the axis of the beam. So there will be no slope at the fixed support. The slope at A is zero. The slope at A is zero. The slope at B is maximum. And now we are going to calculate deflection at the free support. And now we have to calculate deflection at free support. The deflection at C of actual beam is the bending moment at C of a conjugate beam. And next bending moment at C of conjugate beam 
It is the area of m by a diagram. Area of m by a diagram into center of gravity, distance of center of gravity. This area of bending moment diagram multiplies the center of central distance. Area into distance, it is the bending moment of conjugate beam. See guys, we know this bending moment as m by a diagram is divided into three parts. First part, second part, third part. And now we have to calculate center of distance. We know the area of first triangle, area of second shape is rectangle, area of the third figure it is triangle. We know the area and we have to calculate x1. x1 is center of distance of the first figure. It is two thirds of its base, L by 2, and x2, it's center of the second figure, it's L by 2 plus half into L by 2. And next, x3 is the center of distance of third figure, it is two thirds of its base. L by 2 plus L by 2. Area of first figure and central distance of first figure. Area of the second figure and central distance of second figure. Area of third figure and central distance of third figure. And next, this is A1 multiply with X1, A2 multiply with X2, A3 with X3. Therefore, the deflection at B of actual beam, it is multiply this A1, X1. A2 X2 plus A3 X3 it is 9 by 48 WLQ by EI minus that means if deflection comes in neg negative then the deflection is downward minus indicates that the deflection is downwards thank you guys